Hi YouTube family, my name is Alicia English and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing an extreme upcycle while we prep and get ourselves ready for our huge mudroom transformation this week. We have been waiting to work on a mudroom transformation. We live in an area where in the wintertime, we need to have that mudroom space where we have the linoleum flooring. The kids can come in and dump their after school stuff and be able to kind of keep all of that mess contained into one area. And so this room is kind of a catch all for us all the time. And so we are waiting to be able to transform this space into a more functional and organized space. But I want it to flow with the rest of the house. And so I'm going to go with my boho theme. I've been going through the whole house and create an amazing space that's much more welcoming when you come in that side door. And so what I'm going to do during this video is transform a bookcase that I picked up for only $7 at a Habitat for Humanity about six months ago. So this is a teal colored shelf. I bought it to have some extra storage in my art studio and it's no longer being used for that purpose. So instead of getting rid of it, I'm going to transform it into something completely different. $7, I mean, what a steal, right? Habitat for Humanity is a great place because every purchase that you make there, the money goes to help families in your local areas. You can check out your listings where you live to see if you have an agency like that, but I love supporting those small town areas to be able to donate to families that need it. So $7 was an amazing price to pick up this great storage shelf. And since I'm not using it in the art studio anymore, I think it's the perfect solution to my storage problems in our new revamp for our mudroom. While searching online for storage solutions for entryways and mudrooms, I've come across a lot of those DIY lockers and I was inspired to be able to create my own using this bookshelf after we visited the antique market yesterday. If you missed that video, I'll put the card above for you, but there was an amazing metal set, very narrow unit that was perfect lockers for storage for little boys. It would be amazing, but the price point was not in a budget I wanted to spend and having two boys, the top wouldn't be able to reach for one child and the other. So I need them to be side by side rather than top on bottom. And so I'm going to transform this bookshelf into a DIY locker unit that we can put in our mudroom to be able to have coats, boots, hats and mitts, backpacks, things like that. So I'm going to transform this. I'm going to use a few different things for this project that I already have in the shop. I have a whole bunch of leftover beauty tone paint that I used in our bedroom transformation. And so I'm going to utilize what's left so instead of buying new paint to complete this. I also have some hooks. I have a black set and an upcycled white set that came off of some old projects. I always like to keep these things and toss them in a basket in the shop for when I come up with a project because these things really can be costly if you have to buy them new. And so I'm not sure which color I'm gonna use yet, but I guess I'll kind of figure that out at the end. That's kind of my last step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the top shelf and I'm going to leave the bottom shelf, which gives me a cubby unit on the bottom, and I'm going to remove these two middle parts. Then I wanna divide it down the middle use my leftover boards I have from my craft show display to fill in the back and be able to apply some hooks. So we're gonna see if we can get this all taken apart. I almost have all of this taken apart. What I'm going to do is remove the rest of the top shelving here so that I can get all of these old nails out. I'm going to actually screw this back all together the way I want it. I want to have the screws rather than these old nails. So I'm going to get all of these off, take the shelf off, and then I'm going to do a whole bunch of sanding to prep and get some of these rough spots really smoothed out before I can apply any paint, like put it all back together. And then I'll have to do some measurements to see where my divider is going to go and on to the next steps. Isn't demolition the best? It's the best. <laughs> muscle and I was able to get this all put back together and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure what size board that I need to be able to put down the middle to work as a divider 
And then once I kind of figured that out, I can go on to my next step, which would be like the seat part. And so I'm hoping that one of these shelves that I took off will actually be long enough that I can just trim it down and piece it in the middle here, which I think is going to work. So I'm going to measure and see if I have the right size or not. Oh, and I'm just about an inch too long, which is great because I could just cut this down to size and be able to use another board from this piece without using any new materials. So 37 wide is divided by two is 18 and a half. So I'm gonna mark my halfway point so I can move my board to halfway and I'm also gonna do it on the bottom here. That way I know that my thing is centered. Oh, it's gonna look so cool. Ready? I'm gonna line up the bottom ones to get the top in. The next step is for me to prep this to get it ready to be sanded to add my paint. But what I'm going to do is cover some of the really big holes that were left from old nails and screws that were in this unit. I know that this is going to have imperfections and I'm okay with all the character of whatever story this like had before me. But what I'm going to do is just fill some of the really big holes that I don't really want to stand out. So I'm going to use my spackling and I thought my found putty knife, which took us like three days to find finally. Um, so mystery solved. And we're going to apply some putty so we can let this sit overnight and thoroughly dry before we sand all of this. Like my pro spackle That's amazing. I figure if I'm gonna let this sit overnight, it'll be nice and dry by morning. I'm gonna put my trim on the front and then you won't see where the indents were from the old shelving. Fly by bookshelf, hello, storage locker. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Let's rest and come back when we have dry putty. It's the next morning and I really wanted to keep working on this last night, but I had to wait for my putty to dry. So now that all of my spackling is completely dry, I'm going to sand this entire unit. And what I'm going to do is start adding some trim pieces of scrap that I have around the shop to box in some of the areas that I want to give a really polished look. And then I'm going to paint this entire unit a color. and paint this entire cabinet and then I'm going to put my backing on. I'm going to paint this cabinet a really beautiful green color. It's called Heritage Park. And what I'm using is my Beauty Tone interior acrylic paint. You can find this at Home Hardware. This is a really great paint coverage. Sometimes you only need one coat. To do the edging on this cabinet, I'm going to use one of my Alicia English paint brushes. You can purchase these on my Etsy shop. Not the fun part. <laughs> Now that my cabinet is all ready, what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of warmth to this cabinet by being able to add a little bit of that warm tone from a wood. And I'm using my provincial stain to be able to create a little bit of a look of a seat and then some edging of a trim across the front. That way it kind of looks like a little box seat inside the locker cabinet. So I think that's a really nice added touch since we do have a lot of other warm uh, wood tones throughout the house. It'll tie everything in. So I've used some half inch plywood and cut out the size that I needed. flush with the bottom and then the second one okay and then I'm going to install a piece of wood trim lining right up with that one and brad nail it on When 
I was envisioning what I wanted this bookcase to transform into, I knew that I wanted it to have a little bit of a boho feel once I put it in the overall space that I'm going to create in my mudroom. And so I knew I really wanted to bring in that earthy green and some warm wood tones and of course white because a lot of the areas and in that whole space are going to be white walls with maybe a pattern or something. And so I really wanted everything to tie in and I don't really need this to be a focal point, but now that I've created it, I think it's actually going to be a staple in that room and it's definitely going to add some organization and extra function to our mudroom space. I'm really excited with how it turned out. If you think this transformation turned out great, smash that like button. It really is amazing when you really think out of the box, you can transform anything into something so much more purposeful. For only $7, some paint and a few screws, I was able to transform this piece into a really functional new piece of furniture for our mudroom. Although I love the final outcome of this, one of the best things about this project was being able to upcycle more materials. I used some slats from my craft show display wall, which I also used during my bedroom makeover. I still have slats left for another project. So I was able to utilize more of that some scrap pieces of one by twos and of course the bookshelf which was only seven dollars to be able to transform it into this amazing new piece just mind-boggling when you're just a little bit resourceful you can make a lot of different things just to have around your house without spending any money at all if you think this transformation turned out great you want to make sure you hit subscribe and your notification bell that way you'll know when our mudroom transformation video goes on you're not going to want to miss how this turns out in its new space this week, I'll be working on some boho elements to be able to put into this transformation for the mudroom. I'm going to be giving you some sneak peeks of that on my Instagram, so you wanna make sure you follow me at Alicia English on Instagram. If you are not already part of our YouTube family, you wanna make sure to follow the card above and watch our five easy fun ideas for Valentine's so you can enter into our January giveaway. We're giving away one of my custom handmade aprons on my Etsy shop. You also wanna be a subscriber to enter into our February giveaway because we're giving away a Silhouette Cameo 3 to one of our YouTube family members. As always, thank you so much for all of your support. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next project.